disinformation is a people problem. Why do people seek out disinformation? Why do people produce disinformation? What keeps them coming back for more? And how does that affect our democracy? Russia was using gender as one of the cleavages through which it was pushing disinformation narratives. This was in particular in Ukraine and the Republic of Georgia, where women opposition figures and democratic activists were being smeared with narratives that either painted them as silly, uh, silly unserious little girls or as these like sexual beings. And so there's two effects here. One, there's a, a chilling effect, right? Uh, on women who might want to get involved in politics, public life, or activism. But there's also a secondary effect that misogyny uh, is used by foreign adversaries in order to take advantage of our democracies. What we have seen um, is a lot of discrediting of victims. So whether those are victims of, of rape or women who are fleeing with, with children, um, victims whose uh, husbands or sons or other children have been harmed by Russian forces, um, we see them as discredited. You know, they're just looking for, uh, looking for fame. We don't see the internet as a place that real harm happens. And I'm here to say that that is absolutely not correct. That when you have tens of thousands of individuals sending you messages, hateful messages, threatening messages, violent messages, sexualized me messages, that absolutely has an impact on how you live your daily life. I think we need to think about the legal infrastructure to support targets of online abuse. A restraining order, of yesteryear doesn't often cut it when you have a cyber stalker, a cyber harasser, or you know, widespread disinformation being spread about you. That absolutely isn't true and is going to be the first thing that people think about when they bring up your name.